Hello YouTube, uh, this is Caleb and Kyle Rock. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be unboxing um, the Keep On brand, which is the in-house Walmart brand, uh, portable solid state drive. This particular model is the 500 gigabyte model. Uh, and these currently run for $64 for the 500 gig model. Um, I saw it in the shelves and it's about, I don't know, about $20 cheaper than the Samsung T7 drives. And, you know, you look at the speeds, it's not anywhere close to the Samsung T7 series. Um, I think the T7, yeah, T7 series uh, rates the speed. I can't even talk. Oh, my Lanta. The speed rating is like 1300 megabits per second. Uh, this drive is only rated at 400. Um, so it's a little bit cheaper on price, a little bit cheaper on features. And I was just curious because it is a USB-C type drive um, and I think it comes with USB-C uh, to USB-A and USB-C to USB-C. Yep, I see that it includes two different cables here. So one would be used for older computers that don't have USB-C or just use the USB-C to connect it to something like, you know, a MacBook Pro uh, that has two USB-C ports. Should just be plug and play. Um, it says Windows, Mac, Chromebook, should be anything. So basically in this video, I'm going to be opening it up. We're going to see what's inside. And then uh, the later part of this video is going to be some speed tests, see how it formats, all that other stuff. So let's, let's open it up here. Okay. Take that out. Because I was looking on YouTube and there's really not any documentation or unboxings or anything about this. Uh, basically all you get is, uh, just reviews on Walmart and, you know, I don't know, but I figured for the price, $64, it's definitely competitive pricing. Uh, if it's rated for 400 megabits per second, like I said, it's not the fastest drive in the world, but it's also not the most expensive. So I figured it's a good compromise if it works and it's reliable. I've used on SD cards before. I've had no real issues. I have, I, I will say the SD cards are a little bit slower than like Samsung drives or Samsung cards. Uh, but reliability, I've never had one break. I've had a SanDisk break, but that was my own fault. It actually cracked um, and it overheated really bad. And I, I got an RMA. I got a replacement, so that's okay. Um, I'm rambling, but here we go. Here's the SSD. Uh, first impressions, it's very light. It feels actually kind of concerningly light. It's it feels like there's nothing in here. Like, I don't know how much it weighs, but it is very lightweight. Uh, it's got a nice kind of rubber rubber matte finish to it. Um, it says, here we go, focus here. 500 gigabytes, and that's probably the model number or serial number. Uh, USB-C on this side, blank on the other, blank on there. So like I said, very, very cheap feeling, but maybe that's a good thing, maybe not. Uh, here's the USB-C. To USB-C cable seems to be fairly long. You don't want it too long, especially if you're using it for, you know, a laptop. You don't want it dangling, I would say. Uh, but I think this is a solid. How long did it say it was? Uh, 1.31 feet. If that'll focus. There we go. I guess they're both that same size, so a little less than one and a half feet. If I can un, hold on. Okay, finally got that untangled. Uh, this stupid phone is not focusing whatsoever. So it's about that long, you know, if that makes any sense. Here's the box, just like that. Blech. Perfect, perfect size in my opinion. Same thing with the USB-C to USB-A. Um, let's see what the documentation here says. Um, just telling you how to connect it, uh, what it should be used temperature-wise, two-year warranty. Apparently it's three point, USB 3.2 Gen 1, 500 gigabytes, and just telling you 400 megabits per second. Of course, there's asterisks. Um, that's about it. Warranty, FCC guidelines, it exceeds that. Good. So that's the unboxing. Not much to it. Um, got the two cables, the drive, very cheap feeling drive. Uh, so the next part of this video is we're going to run some speed tests and we're going to see uh, how well it performs. 
Hello YouTube, uh, so I'm here on my 2020 MacBook Pro M1. Uh, I just plugged in the SSD and I'm, I have disk utility open right here. And you can see that uh, from the factory, uh, it is formatted in XFAT, which is most commonly used for Windows. Um, so right here, uh, this is a tutorial, I guess, in how, on how to format the drive for Mac OS. So what you do is you go on over to Erase, you can name it whatever. I'm going to call it external whoop, SSD, which it won't let me do that. Why not? Not too long. Let's type it. Uh, I'm going to call it external. That's fine. And from here, we're going to do Mac OS extended journaled. That's the format we want. So we're going to hit erase. It's going to format it into APFS, which is Apple's file system. Um, so you can see, let's see here. Okay, no, Mac OS, <laughs> Mac OS Extended Journal is what we see here. Uh, free is 496.43 gigabytes. So with it being labeled as a 500 gig drive, uh, you actually get quite a bit of storage out of it. Um, so that's good. So I also have Black Blackmagic Design Disk Speed Test right here. So we're going to select the drive by doing Select Target Drive. We're going to hit the external drive that we just formatted. We're going to hit Open. So now that we got the, the drive selected, we're going to hit Start, and we're going to see how the write and read speeds are on this drive. Now keep in mind, it said 400 megabits per second, read and write. So right now we're getting 326 megabytes per second, read 298. So it's a little less uh, than what the box uh, actually states, which I expect. I totally expect that. Uh, it's not too terribly far off. And keep in mind that's still way faster than a traditional hard drive. Uh, and for the uses that I'm going to be using this drive for, just extra backup, uh, especially because this computer only has uh, 256 gigs of storage, a really fast storage, mind you. Um, but being able to have just 500 gigs on tap uh, whenever I want to for you know music, movies, whatever I you know games on Steam, um, this this Mac is also equipped with Parallels, uh, as you might be able to see over here. I have Windows 11 uh, installed in a virtual machine um, running with Parallels, and it runs really well. So just being able to maybe even carry a virtual machine on my SSD would be really nice. Because those uh, those images, you know, go upwards of 100 gigs. Um, so anyway, we're getting about 300, 300, you know, 329 write and 297.8 read, which is which is not bad at all, guys. It's it's not slow by any means. So we're gonna stop this test here, and just as a comparison, we're actually gonna select uh, the Macintosh HD, which is an SSD uh, built into the M1 Mac, and we're just gonna compare. Um, we're going to compare the speeds here. Well, maybe we're not. Um, why can't I do that? Read only. Okay. Can't I get it? Um, yes. Okay, let's now now we're selected. That's good. We're going to try it now. So you can see the internal drive is a million times faster than this external drive. Uh, super, super fast. Uh, write speeds is 1,900 and, oh, even 2,000 for the write speed. Uh, read is 2,700 uh, megabytes per second. So it is blazing fast. You can see all the check marks here are all check green, meaning... It supports any type of video footage whatsoever because it's so dang fast. Um, but for the price, guys, $64, as long as it doesn't break on me, um, I think I'm going to be happy. For 500 gigs, it's actually a really reasonable price uh, for the speeds that you get. And it's an SSD. I mean, you can throw it around and not have to worry about a spinning hard drive with heads on it uh, getting stuck. There's many, of, many people will buy, let's say, a one terabyte uh, external 
uh, Seagate drive or something for their Xbox or PlayStation, which is fine. You know, they're cheap, uh, cheap with, for a lot of storage. Uh, they're not nearly as fast and they're not nearly as reliable. Like if you drop a hard drive, especially while it's running, uh, you're a lot more prone for it actually to malfunction on you. The head will, will get stuck on the platter or, you know, you can lose all your data. So SSDs are a lot more reliable in terms of that. Uh, make sure to run trim on it to make sure that the data is properly properly allocated and properly um, the, the way trim works is, is it ta it's kind of like defragging a hard drive um, it, it moves the data into a more central centralized area and it helps um, it helps with the reads and writes of the NAND flash um, just to just to help reliability so make sure that's enabled um, but other than that, guys, you can see the speeds of my internal drive are a lot faster than this SSD. But like I said, for the price, $64, 500 gigabytes, as long as it doesn't break, I think I'm going to be happy. So with that, that has been an unboxing and kind of review. Um, and uh, thank you very much. Goodbye. Hey, uh, one more clip here. Um, because I said it felt so dang cheap. Uh, I decided to, to pry the cover off. I just took a flathead, pry the cover off, remove the three screws over here, and I wanted to see what the board is like, okay? So it's so super simple, guys. All it is is this little this little circuit board, uh, pretty complex looking on the back, but you see there are actually just two, two NAND chips here. Uh, I would assume each is 256 gigs, um, 250 gigs or whatever. Um, because the other one they sell is 256 gigs, so they just take one chip for that one, and then the 500 gig would be two chips. And it looks like there might possibly be plans for a one terabyte version, because there are solder pads right here and here to allow for 200, 256, 256, you know, times four, which would allow it to be one terabyte. So I'm, I'm really curious, if you had the knowledge and know-how, basically the tools, uh, to solder two more chips onto these little pads here, would it work? Would it automatically see that there are other there are other chips on here and format it to uh, be able to format it at one terabyte? I'm not sure. I don't have the the chips on hand to to try that out. But I just want to show you how how cheaply made this this PCB is. Just USB C on the one end, a uh, whole bunch of traces and resistors and whatnot. Um, but yeah. Hopefully I didn't break it by taking it apart, but um, it's cheap enough. <laughs> there it is.